Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to change gears and instead of doing a devlog, I'd like to do a video on my first mobile game called Grunts. What things I learned from it, what things worked, what things didn't. I kind of teach people that your first project, not to take it too seriously. You, you want to treat it as more as a stepping stone towards something bigger. Because <laughs> the game I'm about to show you now, it's not perfect. It's full of imperfections and glitches and stuff. But it works well enough so people are able to play it. So I think this video would be a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you enjoy. So, this is Ralph. And one day Ralph was just walking around, minding his own business, until one day he gets attacked by a grunt. And in fact, the grunts hate him so much that they keep trying to attack him even after he's knocked out. And yeah, that's the story of the game. So this is a normal grunt. They literally just run up to you and punch you. And this is a stone grunt. They also punch you. But if they spot a stone along the way, they'll pick it up and chuck it at you. You have bold grunts, which punch you and punch through walls as well. And you have the big grunts, which punch everything. And the enemies come at you in waves. They start off small, only one or two grunts, and then they get much larger, more diverse, and your job is to survive for as long as you can. It's a lot like survival mode in video games. So you might be thinking, how is Ralph meant to survive this onslaught of enemies? So the first weapon is the baseball bat. You press A to do a small swing, and then you can press B, which does a kind of wind up big swing that sends them flying. A fun little fact <laughs> about this game that I didn't actually know until making this video. Because the stones that the stone grunts throw at you have collisions on them, if you can time the big swing just right, you can rebound the stone back at the grunt. Unfortunately though, the stone goes right through him. Like, what? Um, which is a shame because that would have been a really cool mechanism, but oh well. So when Ralph is performing the swing animation, the script that he uses, the bat mechanism script, forms a radius around Ralph that once he's actually performing the swing, trigger a ball, and if a grunt is within range during that time, it will apply a force onto that grunt and send that grunt flying. Next we have bombs. Now bombs are a lot of fun. You can either press A and place them, or you can press B and throw them. They're very effective. The enemies go flying with them. I like the explosion and the, the sound of the explosion. And they're a very simple object that uses a circle collider as a trigger. So when a grunt is within range, they are set off. So next we have brick walls. You can use the walls to build a barrier around yourself guide the enemies towards a specific area where you can lay traps. Uh, the walls took a while to make. Each wall has charred objects which give positional information with every orientation of the wall and using that with several lines of code. I managed to make this sort of snap in function where you can just press on the wall and then the walls can start snapping into place and then it's easier to construct the walls around you. Unfortunately though, no one ever used it. No one. Everyone just carefully placed the wall next to each other. They couldn't really figure out the whole snap-in place function, which was a little bit demoralizing. But I guess I should have done a better tutorial than just using a finger to indicate to press the wall. And I also make the walls destructible as well. And this can make for some fun escape situations. And finally we have holes, which are probably the most powerful tool in the game. You use it the same way as you would have walls, you just place them, and then grunts fall into them. And you can probably clear a whole screen of grunts just by placing holes. I've programmed the grunts in a way that once one of them falls into it, they should start avoiding that particular hole. And it works for the most part, but quite often they, they just walk too close to the hole and they slip in. Oh yeah, so this cartoon frog that you've seen glitching on the side of the screen here, that's Rubit. One day when I was just drawing in my sketch pad, I drew this little cartoon frog and a friend of mine insisted 
that I put him in the game. And after a long discussion, we agreed that all he was going to do was just hop around aimlessly, not doing anything. So, uh, but I eventually used him to introduce the game. Maybe. Um, but yeah, that's the story of this little frog. Oh, I almost forgot. Apples. Um, you eat them, you get full health. The end. So, in order for the grunts to track Ralph and avoid obstacles, I use the Pathfinder package provided by the A-Star Pathfinding project. I use a 120 to 90 node grid, and it works very well. And what I do is, every time I place a new obstacle, like a wall or a hole, it updates the Pathfinding grid, so the enemies are able to avoid those obstacles. Well, I say that. If there's a stone that's too close to the wall and a stone grunt's trying to get it, it'll get stuck. So, yeah, it's, n it's not perfect. So, just like when you place a wall, the pathfinding grid updates itself when you destroy a wall as well. And, <laughs> my god. <laughs> right, so because all the grunts try to get in at the same time, they've gotten stuck. <laughs> Brilliant, right. Well, this is actually a good opportunity now to um, show you how the pathfinding grid updates itself. So, if I destroy this wall, so you see how they suddenly change direction, and their paths have been redirected. So with holes, when I first place them, um, they're not actually detected by the grid system. Um, I, oh my god, really? <laughs> my god. He's stuck behind a tree, what are you doing? Oh I see, right, so it's different for the big run. Because he can punch through walls and he can't fall down the holes, I didn't see much of a reason for him to avoid obstacles, so... But I was clearly wrong. <coughs> ah! My god, this bloody die. Right, let's, uh, let's try this again. So, like I said, the holes aren't detected initially. So the grunts fall straight in, and then you can see they start to be detected by the grid system. So the grunts start to move and avoid it. And, <laughs> and the grunts behind me uh, just pushed me in, and they also fell in as well. This, this is such a great game. So the artwork. I basically did all the sprites, the background and illustrations. All of that was done in Affinity. Um, I know most people use Photoshop and other Adobe software. At the time, I couldn't afford it. And Affinity was a one-off payment. I think it was like £50 or something. And then you had it. And it ran very well on my laptop. So I stuck with it. I know Affinity wasn't really designed to animate characters. So I initially tried using some free animation software such as Krita, but unfortunately it just kept crashing my laptop. I couldn't even do a couple of illustrations without my laptop crashing. So I ended up sticking with Affinity and doing each individual sprite on there. But to be honest, Affinity is a great software. I had no issues with it. And you, know, you can save your images as a PNG. You can literally just drag it onto the Unity game engine and everything works. For actually drawing them, I use my old Wacom drawing pad. It's fine, there's a learning curve to using uh, drawing pads like that because obviously it's not natural. You're kind of looking up at the screen and moving your hands and just trying to get used to that motion and that kind of coordination. But you eventually get used to it. For me at least anyway, it never felt really natural. I did feel a little bit inhibited by it, but I know it works for some people. For the music, I used Bosca Kyle. Kyle, I, who knows? I knew nothing about music. I'd never made music before or anything. I just followed a Bracky's tutorial course and then practiced until I made something that wasn't terrible. This was probably one of the most stressful parts of making this game, actually. I didn't realize how hard making music really was. Uh, even very simple kind of music for a simple mobile game. But I'm relatively happy with the song I managed to produce in the end. I'll give you a sample now.
So for the voices of the characters, I just got my friends to do a recording on their phone and send it to me, and then I would upload it to Audacity, and then obviously played around with it until it sounded right. I did the voice for the big grunt. For the sounds of the baseball bat and placing the ball and the bombs exploding, I got those sounds from freesound.com, which is easy to use and you just literally search what you want. Yay! 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 Download. And Bob's your uncle. Yay! 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 <laughs> and that's the game. The next step was to get it published on iOS and Android, which is its own nightmare. But once you get past that, then it is nice to actually have it on display and actually out there for people to play on. It is always good to get feedback from friends and stuff and understand what things worked, what things didn't. And uh, yeah, I learned a lot uh, doing this project. I learned how to use the Unity engine, how to structure code and make artwork, make music and hopefully carry those lessons into the new project. One thing I did realise is that when creating a game independently, you have to be a jack of all trades. You have to develop a wide variety of skills because it's just so much um, that there's so many things that make up a game. But through that process, you start to identify where your strengths are. And then those are skills that you can really hone in on with later projects. And now with the new project, I want to create smoother and better looking art. I want the animations to be more dynamic. I'm going to get someone else to do the music for me. Uh, someone more, with more experience and who's far more talented than I am. And, and to be honest, with the way it's going so far, and I don't want to sort of blow my own trumpet here, but it's not even comparable. I think it looks so much better than it did before. And I'm very pleased with that. Some of the improvements I think are due to changes in hardware and software as well. So I've updated my laptop since, so everything just runs a lot smoother and I don't have to worry about things crashing. I started using animation software, so I'm using Adobe Animate, which has a bit of a learning curve to it. But once you get over it, then yeah, it's just, you would never go back to using Affinity. Instead of having that old Wacom tablet, I've now got a brand new screen tablet, which is just, it, honestly, I started using it for about a minute and then realized this was just a game changer. It was just, the drawing felt so much more natural, so much more easier. And I just felt far more free and less inhibited when I was trying to express my work onto the screen. So if you made it this far, I want to say thank you for watching the video. If you would like to see updates on my new project, then please consider subscribing. This project is going to be a lot bigger, with more characters and a story, and I'm very excited about it. Until then, here's a sneak peek of my next devlog, which will be coming up soon.